need some people that want to testify. Come right up here real quickly about somebody that, listen to me. This is not about just folks getting saved. Because this is about sowing seed. Giving God something to work with. Everybody don't get saved, but we sow in the seed. So I want to hear testimony where you sowed it, but they didn't, you didn't get a harvest off them right now, but you got the seed in the ground. Are you with me? Lift your hands. Come on up. Come on up real quickly. I only got a few minutes. Come up real quickly. I don't want you, I don't want you preaching. Okay, because I only got a few minutes. All right, here we go. Yeah, this gentleman here, his name is Mo. He's from another ethnic background. And he told us at the door that he'd been waiting on somebody to come. He, he'd been waiting on the church to come to him to invite them out to church. And, and he gave his life to the Lord. Now I'm obligated. All right, come on, y'all can rejoice over that. Yeah, he was waiting on somebody. And one of the things I always share with people, you are going to be an answer to prayer to somebody's mama. Uh, my lady's name is Karen Miller. She was waiting also on someone to come knock on her door, and she's looking for a church home, and I'm claiming her for Calvary Christensen. Hallelujah. Another person waiting. Come on. We got like, like 10 people accepted Christ, and then one of the groups, they went up to a family, and they got the first person, and then eight more people in that family got saved. And they needed a ride to church. And then as we're walking down the street, another family member's coming the other way, and they got him saved also. Wow. So with him, him and his wife, there's like 10 people in the family that need a ride to church tomorrow. And if we follow up on that and get them that ride, come on, we got 10 more people. Wow. Wow. Peter, you got to... Peter, you got to help make sure that get done, okay? The ride? All right, come on. I witnessed to a lady and her two daughters, and they, they received salvation, and then this other lady and was, had us pray for a, a friend of hers. But then, I prayed for this young man. And, and oh, there it is, right there. Mm. I felt that mm right there. But I prayed for this young man and his friend. But while I was out there praying, God had somebody go into my house on Elm Street, and they prayed for my son. Look at that. Y'all ain't shouting in here right now. Come on. Hallelujah. You can't sow without it coming back to you. Right. That's why every one of you here. Look you can that. expect something that's going to start happening in your life because when you go out to be a blessing, Hallelujah. blessings right. going to come back to you in right. Jesus' name. Hallelujah. I was able to plant three seeds today with individuals who gave me their contact information. And one young man wasn't going to open the door and asked his father if he needed prayer, asked him if he needed prayer. And he says, you know what? You look like you determined to pray. I said, I am. Praise I God. came here to pray for you. God sent me to you today. He opened up the door, gave me his name. He said, I just need prayer. And I prayed for his mind, his soul, prosperity in his life. In 2012, God will come and minister to him. And I asked him, invited him to Calvary. He said, I'm really busy, but I thank you for praying for me. And Amen. he was determined not to let that blessing walk out away from him. See what I'm telling you? People looking for prayer right now. Now, the thing that I told her not to do, she did. Don't invite them to church. Get them to a life group. Get them into a cell group. Man. All right. Y'all going to have to go fast. I ain't going to get this whole lot. Well, well we, we all group were coming around the corner, and there's a group of guys just yelling and talking loud and, you know, messing around. And all of a sudden, I, we were walking around, and one guy, he's like about maybe a little higher, taller than you. He went running in the house, man. He went running and he seen this group. He said, I don't want nothing to do with these people. So, so we came and I started talking to his other friends and then all of a sudden, he, you know, and, I, and I yelled out, hey, you can't hide from God. Right. That house ain't going to save you from God. Why don't you come on out, man? I mean, come on. And then the guy comes looking through the window and I said, come on. He comes out and starts walking, you know, and, and, he, and I grab his hand. I said, What's your name? You know, my name is Manny Costa, and I come from Calvary Christian Center, and we're just praying for the city, so we want to pray for you guys. What do you need for prayer? Oh, okay. 
So we prayed for him, and then, uh, and then, like I said, you didn't have to run because because God can't hide. Okay, that's good. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. I prayed for this Mexican lady. She said she couldn't speak. Pray English. for a Mexican lady. She says she could not speak English, but apparently, you know what they all say: they can't speak English. But I end up praying. Not that, oh my God. <laughs> I end up praying for her because she needed prayer for her. Um, no English. For her father-in-law. But she spoke English to me. All right. All right. Are y'all holding hands? <laughs> Who's going to talk? Hi. Um, we went out and there was a lady named um, Annie. And she didn't receive salvation, but the seed was sown. And then after I told her about my testimony really quick, she goes, well, I know where that home is, so I'll see you there soon. Wow. And so, and, you know, I was just being bold, like you said, Dad, and people walking in the street, I was like, excuse me, can I pray with you? Can I pray with you? And we did receive some salvation, and we did sow seed. Yes. Amen. I agree with her. <laughs> <laughs> Morning. I've never done this before. This is my first Saturday witnessing. Never done it before. So, yeah. Wait a minute. How many in here have never done it before? Would you raise your hands up? Never done it before? Your first time? Y'all got to give them a big old hand clap and a pray. Look at all the folks. Never done it before. Stand up right now. All you that never did it before, stand up real quick. Stand up real quick. Never did it before. Stand up. Stand up. Stand up. Stand up. Never did it before. Bless them. Bless them. Come on. Bless them. Hallelujah. Bless them, Lord God. Wow. Okay. Uh, but we were uh, passing by this restaurant, and they were eating some Mexican food. And I was like, okay, let's go over there. So uh, husband and his wife and a son who had a 49er tattoo on his head. So I had to make a comment, and I said, let's pray for the 49ers next year. <laughs> so they, they were open to it, so we sat down, got to know them, and then um, and he received salvation, their family received salvation. And then the restaurant, um, we were heading back to the car, and then I said, okay, we're in a hurry because we need to get back here by 1130. But I got the phone number of the owner of that restaurant to invite him to the Kings and Priests luncheon for next. See, now, now the thing is, I, I can't take no more. But the thing is, the thing is, is that, see, that's what you want to look for is, is, is and I didn't get into that, but I'm going to get more into it. You want to look for little ways of opening it up. You can comment on their clothes. You can comment on something. You want to use an opening. If you got a tattoo on their head, you better, tack, you better talk about that tattoo. 49ers tattoo, they committed. They committed. So you use something to be able to reach out to them. You said you want to take any more. No, no, I, I didn't say I wasn't going to take uh, you guys. Uh, okay, I don't want no new more. I got I got to keep. Okay, okay. Shirley and I, we went out as a team, and and we were up here representing our team. We we were walking down the street, and there was a family talking, and we just walked up and said, "Hey, we want to be a blessing to you. Can we pray for you?" And the, this sister raised her hand. She said, "I want to change my life." And the other sister said, "Me too." So we prayed for them, and we gave their life to. They gave their life to Christ. Okay, and y'all see that if you wouldn't have went out, all the people who have already got saved and whose life been touched, they just crying out, "I want to change my life." You could have been at home watching cartoons a day. And so they gave their life to Christ, and I said, "We want to. I want to invite you to my my cell group to, to come over and, and spend some time with." She said, "Well, I don't feel comfortable giving my number." And I said, "Look, let me give you my number, and I'm gonna pray that you call me, and we are going to connect." Wow! Wow! Oh! Well, we were together, but everybody that that I prayed with, there was a spirit of healing. They needed healing. And this one guy was a guy we, were, we waited for, and he came up in his truck. And at first I was kind of intimidated, but he was so humble. He says, thank you, thank you, thank you. I need prayer for healing. And then we were trying to get away from my, he gave me his whole life story. And then he said that he was afraid. The fear was up on him, so I released him. Ain't that something? Come on now. She was intimidated and had fear try to come up on him, her, to go and talking to him. But he was the one afraid. Right, and the other lady that I ministered to, minister to went to the door, and she said, I've been looking for a church home. Praise the Lord. Thank you that you came. Hallelujah. 
And then we had three households. One lady, she came out to greet us. I invited her to my life group, and she actually rededicated her life. And another guy, he came out to greet us. And then Philip, he invited him to his life group. And then we had another couple who was outside and looked like that she was, had something heavy on her mind. So we hurried up and went over there. And she said that she was praying that someone would come by. And why she was praying that she was coming by, because... They have a pastor that's no longer their pastor, and they needed a pastor. So I told her, we have a pastor who is a pastor of pastors. So our apostle will be by to see you and guarantee you, you will have a pastor. Isn't that something she's going to send? She said, our apostle will come by and see you. Thank you for volunteering me. This was not supposed to be for volunteering pastor to go out. I'm sending you to go in Jesus name now that pastor was that that church was on the news last night the pastor made some very bad choices in his life and they're sending him to prison right now first Baptist Church over here down, that, down here so father we lift up the first Baptist Church uh, we lift up our brothers and sisters that are hurting because of their loss of their pastor and all the wrong choices he made and Father, we believe for your miracle working power to put the right man in the office to bring healing and restoration to that church and community that your name would not be shame, but that your name would be glorified. Now turn a bad situation around now in Jesus' name. Well, we went, we went and we ran into this gentleman that was a monk and he gave his life to the Lord, but he also said that he, they were looking for someone to come to their home because they don't go to church unless someone invites them. Okay, well you just tell them that I'm coming. <laughs> no, where where is uh, where is uh, Veronica? Is she in here? Veronica, is she in here right now? Veronica, so she probably on her way in, but uh, uh, she's she's mong and uh, we have a whole big, huh? Where is she? I can't see. There she is. Come on in the door, Veronica. Come here, baby, real quickly. Hurry up. Hurry up. And uh, she got saved here at Calvary Christian Center. And uh, got saved here. Been with me about three years. So we just had some, uh, some, some uh, of the Hmong community that just said that they wanted to come, but they were waiting on somebody to invite them. So we're going to uh, reach out, and because we're going to reach out, do an outreach to the Hmong community, and Veronica is going to help me in Jesus' name. Thank you. So what happened with you guys today? Um, we did really good. Um, we got a lot of people saved, and we got their phone numbers, and we'll be contacting them. Now, now this, how many times have you been out doing this before? This is my second time. Second time. Come on, look at that. Thank you, Veronica. No, this line, no, hey, you can't get back in the line, and I, real quick, have them go down here. I got, I got, huh? Yeah, I just want to share that um, there was a, a guy hanging out with a cigarette and a beer in his hand, offered prayer. He was open to it. And after we prayed, I go, would you like to save Jesus Christ, Lord and Savior? He said, yes. Prayed for him. Another brother, um, same thing, offered prayer, open with prayer, only prayer. And not Calvary and all that. But, yeah. Okay, that's another good point because we never talk about what they're doing. No, my philosophy is you catch a fish before you clean him. You want to talk some more? You see me moving out in the line. And then there's another. See, this is the problem with soul winning. People get excited. I, gotta, I want you to turn to Luke 21. Luke 21 in your Bible. Because I'm giving you a scripture to memorize. And I'm going to give you a couple of points to do homework. And I, I got four minutes. Another brother, uh, his dad, I didn't know at the time, but offered prayer, opened up the door. We prayed. After the prayer, talked, and then just offered him salvation. He said, oh, my dad comes. I'm going to come with him tomorrow. Wow. Uh, we had a great response with salvation and people rededicating their lives. But what was amazing to me, on two different occasions, there were people outside and they were in tears and just waiting for somebody to come on. We went up there, prayed for them, and everybody... Everybody shout right now. Just shout. All the testimonies of the people waiting. Come on, y'all don't hear me. They're waiting. Hi, um, I'm here because I'm just sold out. Um, I, well, that's a good start. I visited um, Pastor's Church right here, and I'm just, I'm going to stay committed. And uh, yes, I am. 
and I was looking for a change in my life. But what you said today ministered to me as we went out. This young lady was actually walking down the street and we stopped in fellowship with her. And she, uh, her grandmother, she had two deaths in her family, but um, the Jehovah Witnesses have been witness to her, but she, she was just thirsty. And, and, and so we just prayed with her and she just just was open to receive and I know that she's going to be here. And so you from San Francisco? Where are you? Where do you know where, where you're from? I'm, I'm from Pittsburgh, but I'm Pittsburgh. Philly. That's good enough. Bay Area. Good enough. Get on down the street. Okay, so my friend and I were switching off, going back and forth to doors, and it was actually her door, but she told me to go to the door, and a young lady about my age opened the door, and at first she said no, and then as we're walking away, she, she said yeah, and then what she asked to pray for was the very thing that God delivered me from. 